Our next speaker, Dr. Effie Pylorinu, is a global thought leader and influencer in fintech. She's the founder of Pylorinu Advisory and is a top LinkedIn voice with over 200,000 followers. She is faculty at the Fast Future Executive. Please welcome Effie. What if I were to tell you that everything that we all know about money is going to be reimagined? At the end of the day, we do live at pivotal moments. Everybody talked about that. So inevitably, money will change because it's powering every economic activity. Now, let me be clear. I'm not here today to talk to you about the demise of the US dollar as an international reserve currency. Neither uh, I'm here to talk to you about the upside potential of the central bank digital currency that the people uh, of um, the people of uh, the Bank of China, the Central Bank of China, has issued. Uh, but I am here to shatter the conventional definition of money that most of you are familiar with from the economic textbooks that says that money uh, is something that has three main attributes and capabilities. It has to be a unit of account, uh, a medium of exchange, and a store of value. I'm here to remind you that money is ju not just a measuring stick. It's really a shared story. It's a shared language. It's, it reflects our social contract. Let's go back a bit to look at the evolution of money. You know, the first writings were neither poems <laughs> nor love letters. What they were were money. They were debt contracts, IOUs. And then we went on to evolve what money was, and we invented coins, bronze coins, gold coins silver coins. Later on, we came up with paper bills. And the first paper bills were not issued by central banks, because central banks are a fairly recent uh, concept, if you want, you know, around the 1700s and then basically about two centuries ago. And fast forward, the evolution of money accelerated and very recently, we came up with all these cards, debit cards, credit cards, virtual cards. We came up with mobile you know, banking services, financial services of all sorts. Now we consider all those completely normal in the internet era. And right now, we are at a stage where money is evolving and it is influenced by three main technologies and the convergence of those. And those technologies are, we have spoke all about artificial intelligence, blockchain recently, and Web3. And it's not only the technologies, it's the principles of those technologies. The principles like autonomy or decentralization or the fact that the internet has shifted from just read and write to owning and delegating. These are all shaping money. Oops. Sorry. You know, money is really reflecting our shared beliefs we live in a world where both consumers and businesses require and expect everything 24-7 instantly. Uh, with financial services, we expect to be served at the point of sale beyond payments. We don't want to visit a bank branch. We want credit at the point of sale, ideally with no pre-qualification. So, in that spirit, even 
what is a financial services business has changed. Those boundaries of which businesses belong to the financial services industry are completely blurred. Did you know that Starbucks has in its prepaid card more money than 4,000 US banks? That's about 90% of the US bank population. $1.9 billion in that prepaid card of Starbucks. That's more than the deposits of each of these 4,000 uh, banks. Did you know that Shopify, which is a marketplace for merchants and businesses, and Toast, which is a SaaS business uh, specifically for restaurants, both of those businesses earn 70 to 80 percent of their revenues from offering financial services to their business clients. So who's in the money business? That's changed. Money really reflects a collective and shifting beliefs, especially after Bretton Woods, where we got rid of backing money with reserves that we can collectively agreed are valuable, mostly gold. And after that Halloween night of 2008, when Satoshi Nakamoto put out the paper of Bitcoin, a peer-to-peer -peer cash electronic system that solved the double spending problem, and made the reality the vision of the Nobel laureate Milton Friedman that envisioned that you could move uh, value securely between two strangers, that became a reality and has shaped what we believe is possible. Today, we understand that digital in the 21st century especially after 2008, is very different than what we thought digital was in the 20th century. Today, we have governments and central banks that are considering or already have Bitcoin as a reserve. This is a digitally native asset. And today, we have self-custodial wallets and much more enabled by cryptography. Money continues to change. It continues to change based on all these, it, it mirrors our collective beliefs. You know, we have shown to the world that we can deliver full scale financial services, the whole gamut from payments to credit to everything, without banks. Where have we shown that? In Africa. Africa is the region with the most, the growing, the, the growing, the most growing younger population. And there, we have delivered over 15 years ago, and now at scale, financial services through a simple phone, not a smartphone, and a SIM card, telecommunication-led money. This is what we call mobile money. It's done through simple phones, a, a SIM card, and a network of human agents where you can go and top up cards. Money really reflects our shifting beliefs. I think we spoke about this uh, extensively today with AI. Right now, we all believe and foresee that beyond people being formal e economic participants and beyond businesses being formal economic participants, we will have AI agents being formal, proper, legal economic participants. Let's not forget that businesses became formal legal economic participants fairly recently. 
you know, limited liability corporations. It's only 50 years that Wyoming came up with that concept. Right now, we are developing infrastructure to serve AI agents. They need IDs. They can't be served through uh, bank accounts. They need wallets. We are changing and shifting our beliefs and designing money and rails to serve the AI agents, be it software or, or in robotics. Money continues to shift. And let me tell you, we are soon going to be living in a world where there'll be so many types of money, as many as ice cream flavors. And don't laugh at this. We already have central bank digital currencies, which are the equivalent of what digital is in this century. And these are, you know, 90% of central banks are working on these pilots. Some are wholesale, some are retail. We also have banks looking at tokenizing their deposits, so issuing tokens that are backed by bank deposits. But more importantly, we have new private tokens issued by private entities. PayPal has issued their own stable coin. Wyoming, the state, is looking at issuing its own token, a, a government a private money stable coin. Walmart is looking to issue its own stable coin. I'll leave you with the following thought. Money continues to evolve based on our shifting beliefs. And our imagination is really the limit of this. We live in a world where we believe that we can stream money. Why not? Why should we be paid biweekly? We should be paid daily. And in some cases, we should be paid, you know, instantly. Why should we live in a world where the only collateral that qualifies as collateral is real estate and maybe our investment portfolio, our stocks and our bonds? We have the technology to tokenize and have as collateral all sorts of other assets, be it our passion assets, be it our virtual assets, the skins that Alan was talking about, but most importantly, other intangible assets. It can be nature, it can be our IP. We can build systems of liquidity around these assets and maybe get rid of any form of money as we know it today. The sky is the limit. I'll leave you with this thought, really. We live at a time where money is being reimagined and the remix of money that we will uh, live in w with is really uh, just broad in terms of its form, in terms of how it moves. Thank you very much. Thank you.